Christ, I want to thank you for joining us for our Wednesday devotional. And if you've been following us these past couple weeks, you know what we're going to be talking about today. I'm sure 90% 90 of y'all can already guess it. But we are going to be continuing our discussion on the love of God and love and, you know, kind of breaking down what love is and what love isn't. And we're still in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 4 which says love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, and it is not proud. I know last week we talked about how love isn't envious, and today we're going to talk on the next part, which says it is not proud. And I kind of want to go through and show how God's love, you know, how God isn't proud, how his love for us, and there's, there's really no room for pride in love, because love is all about self-sacrifice. It's all about putting others before yourself. You know, it's taking no thought for you, but putting others and esteeming others higher than yourself. You know, so what pride is, is it's basically thinking of yourself, your ideas, your accomplishments, you know, whatever is better than or above anyone else's. So you're always right. It's your way or the highway. You can never make mistakes. You know, you know better. You have more experience, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, pride is something that we all struggle with. I know it's a big, big thing for me, you know, as minister. You want to try to like, you know, talk about all the, you know, many people, how many people you've prayed for, or how many people you've led to the Lord, or how, how many people have been healed under your ministry. But then you go through and understand that none of that really matters. And that's all talking about pride. Like, yes, you want to go after people. You want to go after souls. You want to see miracles. But it's not like a track record. You know, you're not supposed to be keeping a track record or trying to show off or, you know, compete with other people. It's all just staying focused on God. And, you know, your whole goal is to go out and serve others and help others. You know, a proud heart is something that's very dangerous. And like I said earlier, it doesn't have a lot of love in it. You know, the Bible tells us that in Proverbs 16, 18, it says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Because you see someone's proud. What, what the danger is with pride is that it makes it impossible for an individual to receive correction. Meaning if someone comes and tells you, hey, look, you know, something you were doing was incorrect. I don't like the way you're behaving. You know, I think you could do this better. It doesn't matter. You know, any form of correction, people who are pride, who have a prideful heart, can't receive it. They get all defensive. They get all angry. They're like, who do you think you are to tell me this? Or you don't know what you're talking about. Or you haven't been through my situation. Or you're not walking in my shoes. All of that is a form of pride because pride is being wrapped up in self. So we got to reflect on ourselves and check ourselves and say, okay, God, where am I prideful? Where have I shown areas of not wanting to listen to other people? Or have I not been able to receive correction because of different situations or things going on in my life? And that's why it leads to destruction. Because a lot of times, even God will try to bring correction through us through, you know, his word, spiritual leaders, influence in our lives. And if we're not able to receive that correction, we keep walking down the wrong path. We basically lead to our own destruction. And then sometimes what will happen is if prideful people do get in destructive situations, they get to the place where they try to blame it on everybody else but themselves. Because they can never be wrong or they can never make mistakes or it was all this other person's problem or all this other person's fault that you acted this way. And that is a root of pride. So that's where it comes to the importance of humility. You know, the Bible tells us in John, 1 John 2.16, it says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of possession or the pride of life, you know, is not from the Father, but it is from the world understand that it's not of God. Pride and, and living in pride isn't something of God. You know, Psalms 10, 4 says, in, pride of his, in the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are there is no God. And that's something else that's, you know, very prideful is when you get into the position or individuals get into a place where they don't want to acknowledge God, they don't want to acknowledge there is a God, or they think they know better than God. You know, that's a scary thing, especially what will happen with many Christians is they'll read the word or they'll read the Bible and they'll be like, well, I know the Bible says this, but da 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 da. That's a form of pride because in saying that, but you're saying, well, I know better than God. And that's very dangerous. It's, it's dangerous. That's why the Bible warns so much against, against pride. And, you know, the Bible tells us 
You need to become humble. Walk in humility because humility will allow you to overcome pride. It destroys pride in your life. You know, humility allows you to hear from God. Humility will make changes. Humility will lead to growth. You know, humility leads to promotion, not pride, but walking in humility. You know, Romans 12, 16 says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. So what is this saying? The Bible's telling us that walking in humility will help you live in harmony with each other. It, it'll help you live in harmony with your family, with your neighbors, with fellow church members, because you're not trying to prove something of yourself. You're not trying to prove that you're right or they're wrong or, you know, justifying different actions. And, you know, a big thing in humility is a lot of times, sometimes it's, it's just having to be quiet. Or even if you feel like you're in the right, just still going up to that person and apologizing and saying, you know what, I'm sorry if something I did offended you. I'm sorry if something I said didn't come across right. You know, like I don't want to, to be a point of contention. And that's humility. Humility is taking the boldness and the courage to acknowledge when you're wrong. Taking the action to go to somebody and say you're sorry. Taking the action to go to somebody and try to make peace, you know. Taking the action and admitting your faults. You know, that's the hard thing that a lot of us don't really want to do, you know. It's like, well, I don't want, you know, to go out and admit my faults, or I don't want to go and tell this such and such person they're wrong, you know. But that's a part of humility is doing that, is laying down yourself. I mean, you look at God. It says even God humbled himself because he was, he was up in heaven, you know. Jesus was up in heaven. He had everything. He had all the power. He had all the angels worshiping him. He had streets of gold, you know, banquet tables, so full mansions. He was living in paradise, you know. That's what heaven is. It's paradise, you know. And he decided to leave that, come to earth and humble himself not come to earth and like parade around and be like, I'm oh, God, you need to worship me. I healed you. You know, he said, no, I came to serve. And everything Jesus did was out of serving. And every time he healed somebody, every time he was moved, he was moved out of love and he was moved out of compassion because he humbled himself. I mean, he even humbled himself so much that he would die for people who were mocking him, who were accusing him, that, you know, were angry at him, that hated him, that called him names. And he humbled himself so much that he said, I'm still going to die for you, even though you said all of this, even though you treated me this way, even though you whipped me, you know, even though you scourged me, I'm still going to die and I'm going to take your sins upon myself. Like that is true humility. Not only did he, you know, he didn't say, well, I'm going to die and then I'm going to come back in judgment and you're all going to go to hell. He said, no, I'm going to take all of your sins, everything you did wrong, even though I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do any sin. I'm going to take it and I'm going to pay the price for it for you. That's humility. That's the extreme of humility. And that's through love. He did all of that because he loved us. It says God so loved the world. You know, so humility is a huge part of love because it allows us to sacrifice things we normally wouldn't sacrifice. We go low for other people. We serve other people. We uplift other people. We'll, you know, acknowledge we're wrong, you know, or if we hurt somebody, even if we personally don't think we were wrong. You know, we're like, hey, look, you know, I don't know what if I did was right or wrong. Like, I'm sorry, you know, for whatever happened. And it's taking the step to actually admit it and taking the step to do it. You see, we have to humble ourselves. You know, Luke 14, 11 says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You know, and I want to end on that last scripture and want you guys to meditate on what you think that means. You know, what does it mean to humble yourself? You know, how does that look like? What do you need to do to walk in humility? Go through the scriptures, meditate on that, think on that, because it says those who humble themselves will be exalted, brought into positions of promotion, set before kings, have access to things they would never even think they could have access to. But those who do not, those who still walk in pride, they will be humbled, meaning either you're going to have to do it yourself or situations in life is going to come at you hard and humble you for you. 
And those are not fun places to be. I mean, you can go through the Bible and see instances where God had to humble different people. I know one king he humbled and sent him out into the field for years and he would eat and became like the animal and the beasts of the field, you know, to humble him. So don't let situations become your point of humility, but take the decision now to listen to correction and humble your own heart so that you can be exalted in the end. And again, I want to thank you guys so much for listening today. I hope you were blessed by the broadcast and you have a great day and I hope to see you next week.